Things are really starting to heat up in the music industry, and I've been doing this for a really long time, pretty much every day. Drop a thumbs up if you've been along for the ride. I really appreciate that. But in my opinion, this is one of the more consequential stories that I've ever covered on this channel. We're getting a window into where music is going. This is going to have a real domino effect, in my opinion, on the way music is consumed, the way it's enjoyed by fans, and the record labels are leaning, or at least Universal Music Group is leaning in to artificial intelligence. It's one of those things where it's, if you can't beat them, join them. I'm not so sure I blame them for that. I do have a lot of questions about how this is going to work, though, to say the least. What is going on? This story just dropped from Financial Times about an hour ago. And they claim to have sources connected to both Google and Universal Music Group. And they say they are negotiating over the rights to license financially the voice, the way that artists sound when they sing. Not individual songs. There's already a system for that with cover songs. There's a system for that with licensing the recordings that the record labels often own already. What we're talking about is AI-generated content that sounds very, very similar to the artist's voices. Now, to be perfectly clear with you, I have no issue with the artists being able to make money off of these voice recordings, off of this AI-generated content that sounds just like them. I have no issue with that whatsoever. What is bizarre to me is that the record labels are seemingly getting in on the action. This is not content that they funded. This is not content that they financed and they have a record deal that says that they own the recordings or the masters or however that works. This is a situation where some nerd or whatever, I say that jokingly, but somebody somewhere is typing into a computer a prompt and it's generating really similar, almost identical recordings to the artist. The artist should be paid on that. But we're seeing the record labels get in on the action. We're gonna see what the artist's response to all of this is. What I would like to see is the artist getting all of the revenue that they're entitled to from their likeness and not having to go through a label to do that. Things are really interesting. And it sounds like there's gonna be some sort of software developed to deal with this. And we're really early on, but I'm telling you, this is going to have huge ramifications, not just for musicians, but I think also for the creator YouTube space as well, which I will explain too. I think that Google is showing a little bit of where things are going to go. Not sure. Sh I am not so sure that that is a good thing, but we'll see. So here it is from the Financial Times. Google and Universal Music negotiate deal over AI deepfakes. New technology that can mimic artist voices has been seen as a growing threat. And, and I do agree with that. But here we go. Google and Universal Music Group are in talks to license artists melodies and voices for songs generated by artificial intelligence as the music business tries to monetize one of its biggest threats. It's like if you can't beat them, join them. The discussions confirmed by four people familiar with the matter aim to strike a partnership for an industry that is grappling with the implications of new AI technology. And folks, the, this is a real problem. We are right here. We are this close to people being able to make indistinguishable recreations of musicians' voices. Whether or not the labels own that, though, is a whole nother thing. If they're recreating a song that's already been recorded, that's one thing. If it's an original generation, I'm not so sure the labels can really gain from that. I, I think the artists should be able to, but it, it's a little odd to me. It says, the rise of generative... Generative AI has bred a surge in deep fake songs that can convincingly mimic the voices, lyrics, or sound of established artists, often without their consent. That is very true. Frank Sinatra's voice has been used on a version of Gangsta's Paradise. There's a ton. There's like Kanye Western, where they're doing country music versions. Um, it says, an artist's voice is often the most valuable part of their livelihood and public persona, and to steal it, no matter the means, is wrong. Universal Music General Counsel told U.S. lawmakers last month, and I agree with that. Again, no issue with the artists licensing their voice. It's just a little odd to see the, the label getting into it. Now, it says that the discussions are at an early stage here. No product launch, no product launch is imminent. But the goal is to develop a tool for fans to create these tracks legitimately and pay the owners of the copyrights for it, said people close to the situation. Artists would have the choice to opt in. So that answers that question. The artist will get a choice as to whether or not they participate in this marketplace where you can take a voice of a band and go, make it sound like this or make it do that. There are so many questions, though, 
what happens, and this is a very real possibility, what happens if someone makes a version of a song that's original using this artist's voice that went extremely viral and may overshadow some songs in their catalog? Is that possible? Yes, it absolutely is possible. Is it possible for bands like Metallica and things like that? Maybe not. But there are many bands where the possibility exists for someone to generate a song using AI technology that could potentially go so viral it overshadows. Are fans going to request them to play these songs in a live setting? How does all of that work? Really bizarre territory that we're getting into, folks. It's very bizarre. It continues. Warner Music, the third largest music label, has also been talking to Google about a product. Music executives liken the rise of AI-generated songs to the earlier days of Google-owned YouTube when users began adding popular songs. As the soundtracks to videos they created, the music industry spent years battling with YouTube over copyright, and the music industry, uh, they now pay the music industry about $2 billion a year for these user-generated videos. And I just want to say, YouTube has not been perfect. They have done a really good job of trying to mitigate these issues as best as possible. I am not going to sit here and just blanket trash everybody involved. I know there is nuance to this. I know it's extremely complicated when you get into licensing and how people can include it in their videos. And YouTube has done a good job adding features. They're going to start allowing us to directly pay. If I want to pay, you know, $40, $50 or something to have a well-known song in one of my videos, we're going to eventually get to the point where you can do stuff like that. It may not work exactly that way, but there's going to be some form of that. And I'm totally cool with that. And I appreciate their efforts. But it says, as AI has gained traction, some big stars have expressed anxiety about their work will be diluted by fake versions of their songs and voices. Exactly. What happens if one of these fake versions that sounds really good, and some of them will, a lot of them will, what happens if it overshadows their work? It says, the issue was thrust into the spotlight earlier this year when an AI produced song mimicked the voices of Drake in the weekend, went viral online. UMG, home to Drake, Taylor Swift, and other popular musicians had the song removed from streaming platforms over copyright infringement, which I do agree with. Uh, Drake in April slammed another song that used AI to mimic his voice, calling it the final straw. Rapper Ice Cube has described such clone tracks as demonic. Other artists have embraced the technology. You have artists like Grimes. Uh, there are a lot of artists out there that uh, do also embrace this. Uh, she says, there's some good stuff, she told Wired Magazine this week. They're so in line with what my new album might sound like. It was sort of disturbing. On the other hand, I'm like, oh, sick, I get to live forever. I'm into self-replication. The chief executive of Warner Music on Tuesday told investors that with the right framework in place, AI could enable fans to pay their heroes the ultimate compliment through a new level of user-driven content, including new cover versions and mashups. He added the artists should have a choice to opt in. There are some that may not like it, and that's totally fine. And I agree with that entirely. I, I would say that maybe most probably won't like this when you consider the fact that, okay, so let, let's just put it this way. If I want to do a really good AI-generated version of an artist band, and I pay them for that, can I also go shoot a really good music video? Can I shoot that music video, and can that music video go on to get 5 million, 10 million views? Yes, it can. Can I put it on Spotify? It sounds like you can. It's getting really crazy. There's a lot of, can I make a lyric video? I'm telling you, there are a lot of questions that come along with this. This is not settled. And I want to say this too. I think that maybe the record labels are doing this so they can have an idea of which artists are opting in and then they can take action when people are doing it for artists that may not. And so again, I'm not going to sit here and just blanket trash this idea. I know that it is, very complicated. There are a lot of layers to this. There's a ton of nuance, but there are ramifications for this and it's going to transform things. And, and also folks, it looks like, it does look like YouTube may be leading in to some of this AI stuff. It really does. And what does that mean if that is true? What would that mean for the creator economy? Is YouTube going to allow there to be channels of just AI created fake bots that are hey, man, what's up today? And it's AI. I don't know. It says, for Google creating a music product that could help the company compete with rivals such as Microsoft, which has invested $10 billion into OpenAI, which is ChatGBT. ChatGBT is crazy mind-blowing stuff. Uh, they've integrated into Microsoft's Bing. Universal Music in April urged streaming platforms to prevent AI services scraping their songs without permission. 
I don't have any problem with that. Lyra Cohen, a former record label exec who leads YouTube's music division, has been working on the project for Google, according to mo multiple people familiar with the matter. And so Google previewed a music generator of AI. They have a, a feature where you can type in a prompt and it'll make a song. I've tested it a little bit. It's not that robust yet, but it's gonna get there soon. It's gonna get real interesting, real fast, folks, here in the music industry. The good news is there are good takeaways. There are some potential bad takeaways. Overall, it's just interesting. The good takeaways is that the artists are gonna be able to opt in. When I first read this, I'm like, are they just doing this without people's permission? No, they are not. So I have no problem with any artist who wants to be a part of it being a part of it and any artist who doesn't want to be a part of it not being a part of it. So it sounds like this is a way for them to determine who wants to be a part and then they can defend the artist who want nothing to do with it. So in that sense, it's not really a bad thing, but I would be very cautious if I was an artist that somebody wouldn't make a viral song accompanied with a real good music video or something. How much of this could devalue people's catalogs? I would love to know that, folks. I don't know, it's getting pretty crazy. Let me know what you think in the comments and be sure to hit that subscribe button for the latest news and updates from Rockfeed.